G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. <laughs> what was that? G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Continuing our little pre-draft series of going through individual prospects from the upcoming 2023 AFL draft and going through some highlights, going through a bit of a profile and getting a bit of a feel for what a given player is. And today we're going to do Western Australia's Colton Falstrup. So Falstrup is a player that I've known about for a little while now. I remember him, I think it was last year, starting the year really well in the Subiaco Colts competition. Oh, sorry, the uh, Waffle Colts competition for Subiaco. And he started of the year as one of the leading goal kickers and since then he's sort of a player I've kept my eye on a little bit. Since then he has uh, sort of been elevated to uh, Subiaco's league side this year and played a lot of football at the highest level men's competition. So what sort of player is he? He is uh, about 188 centimeters, a sort of a taller utility type, plays predominantly forward but is an explosive strong bodied uh, player who could roll through the midfield as well and provide some real X factor. So as far as player comparisons go, maybe a Cam Zerha. We'll use Rookie Me Central again for a bit of a profile on him. They've got him as 186 centimeters. I don't know how current that is. Maybe he is only 186, but he's a high half forward player that they describe him as, a creator and a finisher. If you go to the analysis tab, it gives you a breakdown of his strengths and weaknesses, again, courtesy of Rookie Me Central. So that's a strength to include effort, kick penetration, overhead marking, power, scoreboard impact and strength, and uh, consistency and his conversion could be two areas of improvement for him. So we can go and have a look at his waffle highlights this year. This is where he's listed as 188 centimeters. Again, I don't know which one is correct, but he's around that range. Average about 11 disposals a game, played every game league this year, or except for once he got dropped down to the reserves and then made his way back into the team for finals and played it in Subiaco's loss in the prelim to Peel Thunder. So averaging a modest 11 disposals a game, three and a half marks and uh, less than a goal a game, it doesn't sound spectacular on paper, but don't forget this is an 18 year old prospect that is playing against uh, you know seasoned men. And by seasoned, I mean they have played a lot of seasons themselves. They haven't been, you know, paprika. So we're gonna watch two videos today. First of all, this one is from his under 18s championships performance. Uh, it's a compilation from Footy Stuff, the YouTube channel again. I've shouted that channel out a number of times and I'll continue to do so because uh, they do great video compilations of players and their uh, various possessions. So the first one is actually an under 18s champs game against South Australia. And then after that, we're gonna watch him perform in the one of the finals games. I think it was the first final that Subiaco played again in the men's competition. So let's see what we think of Colton Falstrup. So he's number 23 here, gets 21 disposals in this game and a goal, four inside 50s. Those are pretty good stats. As you can see, he's kind of a, we can't really tell from this angle, but he's a pretty physically developed player. That was a nice-ish kick in terms of uh, the way he hit it, but the decision wasn't great. It was a turnover in the middle of the ground, which was not ideal. Got a bit of power behind that kick, goes inside 50. What happens here? WA gets a free kick. Gets a bit of a late tackle on that one and follows up with the second effort. Running to create some link up play. What's the kick inside 50 like? He's hit it pretty hard. Yeah, it's to the advantage. Again, um, I'm not sure exactly what the WA player was thinking there. He kind of just leapt a little bit early for it, but it seemed like an accurate kick, markable at least. Again, so getting some out, outside ball in this game. Was that his tackle? No, he's off the play here. Where is he here? Dangerous position. Oh, he was going to have a shot. He decides to use his vision and hit up somebody in a better position. That was nicely done. He's got to affect a tackle here. Great effort. Okay, so good intensity in the forward 50 there to you know force a boundary throw in. Well done. This is Clay Hall here kicking to a two-on-one. How does he do? He does pretty well there. Okay. Well, he wins a free kick. I mean, he was never actually going to do much there. He was completely outnumbered, but he did well to stay in that contest and earn a free kick. I presume this is the goal he kicks, but there is no guarantee. It sways off to the left. Again, involved in some outside play. Gets the ball back. What we do see is he has a propensity to kind of bomb it long. He doesn't really take that extra second. I don't know if that was actually even an option for him there. I don't know what was the best scenario for him, but I've kind of seen that in a trend so far. Here we go. Nice sidestep. Good kick on the left. That was a good kick on his left. It was a little bit 
high maybe for the player, but you give him points for that. Well done, wins the ball back. So he's actually probably got a little bit more class and skill than I uh, than I had thought prior to watching this particular video. Again, a little bit of a bomb. Not a great uh, area to kick it. There was about a four on one there. Where is he here? Back of the contest. Absorbs a tackle. He's a big bodied player. Does well to uh, withstand the tackle there. You'd imagine with some physical development, he can do that at AFL level too. Good grab. Kick inside 50 will be telling. What does he do? Does he bomb it long or does he hit, hit someone up? That's what I'm curious here. He's kind of left it so he only really has the chance to bomb it long. Would have been nice to see him you know, move the ball quickly there, but it was a decent kick inside 50. Does pretty well there to keep the ball in play and get it to advantage. Yep, fair play. Soccer's the ball forward. Again, has a chance inside 50 here. Not a lot of movement inside 50, so his options are less. He's probably going to have to bomb this long. Oh, there's a player there. He didn't see him. Come on, Colton. One-on-one, -on -one, this is where he usually does well. Yep, I'm happy with that. Gets to the ball first. Goes to pick it up and gets wrapped up. So that was a clay hole kick inside 50. Doesn't quite come off. Here we go, false drop. He was strong over the ball there and won the football back and kicked a goal. Nicely done. So again, I haven't seen him in the midfield quite yet. He seems to be this high half forward role where he, he runs from the top of the square into the, into the action. Gets a little bit of a shove in the back, no free kick. Wins the ball out anyway. Handball is creative, but uh, not particularly helpful. Does well there. So a bit of link-up play as well from Colton, which is good to see. Nice fend-off. Has the left foot. Did he drop that with two hands? I'm not sure, but the, you know the actual kick itself was good. Oh, here's a chance. Oh, that is unlucky. Okay, so I, for the most part, like what I saw about Colton. He's a big-bodied player with weapons, I would say. What we didn't really see is him... I think, I think he's got good foot skills, but we didn't really see him put them to use. It felt like there was a couple of times where he decided to go long rather than take a, um, you know, a more thoughtful option inside 50, for instance. He probably just held it up a little bit too long, but his attack on the foot is good. He ran around to accumulate possession. You kind of got the sense that uh, you know he'd been playing against Waffle um, seniors, obviously, where he probably didn't have a physical advantage. He was able to use that a little bit in this particular video, I thought. So let's watch the second one. Okay, so this particular one is a uh, Waffle Finals Week 1 or Finals Week 2. It did tell me. I forgot already. But this is it's a pretty high level. It's the highest level he can play at at the moment. So in this game, he had 12 possessions, 6 marks, 3 tackles, and a goal. That's such a handy performance for a high half forward that is only oh, 17 turning 18. I don't know how old he actually is. Where is he here? Does he make a contest in the air? He does. Doesn't quite impact, though. Does well to find some space. Take the grab. This should be a shot on goal, you'd think. Nicely done. It's important to kick those in a final, and he's made no mistake there. Where is he here? The handball was a little bit, uh, I think it was intercepted maybe. It was a little bit shy for him. But he does well. He puts it to a one-on-one. -on -one and the uh, the player there, is that Sokol? I'm not sure. Uh, took a really good grab. That was a good tackle by Colton there. Where is he here? Ah, good. It's nice to see his overhead prowess there. That was a good, good mark. How's the kick? Yep. Good accurate kick to a player in space. Oh, almost brought that down. It would have been impressive if he had he brought that down, but the flight of it was a little bit awkward to, to mark overhead. Oh, how's he go with this? Yep. Okay, affects the tackle. Stops the scoring opportunity, I think. Unless that, oh, that would be in the forward line, but still, good tackle. Makes a contest there. Nicely done. So the good physicality is what we're seeing as well. You know, he's uh, obviously smaller body than a lot of these players, 
but his intensity has been good. Again, long bomb inside 50, not a whole lot to go to, so he goes to a one-on-one, -on -one, but, you know, one-on-one -on -one inside 50 with that much space, not the worst option. Bit of a hack kick forward there, drives it forward to, again, a contest. Maybe just a little bit of extra composure there, and uh, Subiaco might have been able to do something more with that. Nice handball. Nice handball to advantage of the running player. Does well to uh, get a spoil in there, keep the ball at ground level. Again, didn't have a lot of time, but at the same time, it was a bit of a blind kick and uh, it becomes a turnover. Oh, what was that? Here he comes to intercept, does well. Goes for the switch. Ball held up a little bit in the air, but it did find its target. Good tackle. What's happened here? I was uh, in the back against him. That's, is that against Colton? I didn't really see it. It didn't, didn't look like in the back. Here we go. He's in space here. I think this is their defense. Oh, dear. Runs himself into trouble. He's got a weird bounce. Did anyone else notice that? Just the technique of it looked a bit weird. Cool, so that's the two videos that I wanted to show you. Um, what do we see there from our attribute point of view? Well, he, he looks strong and physical and a little bit explosive. We didn't really see a lot of that in the video. What I mean by that is there was a lot of times where he'd sort of get the ball and kick it long a little bit blindly, showing a little bit of a lack of composure, but his foot skills do seem tidy at the same time. He's uh, got good overhead skills. Again, that didn't really come up in the video, but we saw one strong mark overhead and then the other experts are saying he's strong overhead, so I'm happy to buy that one. Would have been nice to see him at like a center bounce or something like that. I'm still not sure if he, he plays midfield genuinely at the next level or if he's just a accumulating high half forward. And there were a couple of moments there where he could have shown you know, his, his explosiveness by taking a player on, but decided not to either go for the kick or pass backwards or something like that. That could be a confidence issue rather than athleticism per se. But you know, the fact that he's playing against men um, in his under 18s year, that will hold him in really good stead for playing early in 2024. Where does he go? Well, that's a good question. I think his range is probably between 15 and 25. You could see a team with a need for that sort of dynamic player taking a punt in the late first round, or we could see him slide a little bit. Colton Falstrup does have, you know, people on either side of the ledger. Some people see really good attributes, other people a little bit more skeptical. I think I see an AFL player in there. His profile reads like a Jordan Degoe, but um, basically from what I've seen, seems like a little bit more of a conservative player than that. So let me know in the comments what you think. I'd be pretty happy with uh, him at West Coast's second pick, but I don't think he would get that far. But I hope you're enjoying the series anyway, guys. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think of Colton Falstrup and also keep the requests coming for players to do in this particular series. But for now, I'll thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.